Now let's step through the basics of how to use it. The basic steps for using Lucas are arrive, confirm cardiac arrest, and start manual CPR. Unpack Lucas and power it on. Assemble Lucas on the patient. Adjust and operate Lucas. Defibrillate and ventilate. Transport the patient. Lucas is very simple. This is the control panel. Here's the on-off button. Push it down for one full second to power on or off. When the green LED next to the adjust button lights up, you can adjust the suction cup like this to the correct start position for each patient. Use the pause button to set the start position for the suction cup. Press the active button for continuous compressions. This LED prompts you for ventilations eight times a minute. While Lucas is operating, the pause button pauses compressions with the suction cup up at the start position you set. Active 30 to 2 does 30 compressions, then pauses 3 seconds so you can give two ventilations. Again, there's an LED to prompt you and also an audio signal that alerts you just before each pause. Useful. A couple of other things briefly before we move on. Make sure you don't cover these vent holes under here so it doesn't overheat. If there is a malfunction during operation or a problem that requires service, this indicator lights up red and you'll hear a warning buzzer. This button mutes any alarms during operation for one minute. But when Lucas is powered off, you can hold this button down to see the battery status. You should learn the various warning and battery status indications. They're all in the instructions for use. Keep it handy in the bag. What you're watching for is a red or orange LED here, together with an alarm signal. That means you have a low, empty, or defective battery. You need to either change the battery or plug in external power. To change the battery, pop it out like this and put in a fresh one like this. You can plug in the external power supply here if you're using mains or car power. But remember, the battery must be in position for Lucas to operate, even if you use external power. To minimize interruptions, always have a charged spare battery available. Okay, let's go over the operation steps in detail. Just like with manual CPR, when you arrive at the patient, confirm cardiac arrest and start CPR according to your protocols. If someone is already doing manual compressions, offer to relieve them. Now get out Lucas, put the backpack down with the top towards you like this and open the bag. It's easy. Before you take Lucas out of the bag, push and hold the on-off button until it turns on. It self-tests, and you see the green LED when it's ready to use. Assemble it on the patient. Get out the back plate. Stop compressions briefly and slide it under the patient's back. If there are only two of you, one should support the head while both of you lift the upper body. Lay the back plate below the armpits like this. Clear the patient's arms away from the back plate at these latch points. Keep doing manual chest compressions as much as possible. We're trying to keep up the coronary perfusion pressure and clean off any gel or anything slippery from the patient's chest to help Lucas stay in position. Lift the upper part of Lucas out of the bag by the leg handles and it springs open. Pull up on the release rings until the claw locks open. Okay, now click the closest leg onto the back plate. Keep fingers clear. Then stop manual compressions and lock in the other leg like this. Good. Pull up on both legs to make sure they are locked into the plate. That's very important. It's also important to make sure you position the suction cup correctly for effective compressions and to avoid serious patient injury or compromising the patient's circulation. Center it on the sternum with the lower edge of the cup just above the end of the sternum. That looks pretty close. Okay, you should be in the adjust mode. You can tell by the LED here. Use two fingers to lower the suction cup like this. You want the pressure pad inside the cup to touch the patient's chest, but without compressing the chest so it doesn't compromise circulation. But now we can see the edge of the cup is a bit below the edge of the sternum. We'll have to reposition the cup. Lift it back up like this and move Lucas by pulling on the support legs. Push the suction cup back down and there, that's better. Hold it there and push the pause button to set the upper limit of compression. Now you can take your fingers off of the cup. 
It's important to press the pause button before removing your hand from the suction cup. But of course, when Lucas is operating, your fingers should not be on or below the suction cup. If you want, you can mark the right position on the patient's skin like this. With a mark, you can easily see if the suction cup shifts and you need to reposition it. What you're doing with the pressure pad is setting the upper limit of the compression. From here, it compresses down the same distance every time and then returns to this position. But if Lucas alarms with three fast signals when you try to enter the pause or active mode, then the patient is too small for Lucas and it will not be able to perform a full compression. Or if you can't get the upper part around the patient and secure the claw locks onto the back plate, then the patient is too big for Lucas. Do not try to use Lucas on a patient that it doesn't fit. It won't be effective. In that case, you'll have to continue manual compressions. In most cases, like this, it's fine. So let's do some compressions. Push the active button and there it goes. You can see we switched over to a mannequin so we can show you full compressions. If you need to reposition Lucas, make all the adjustments as quickly as you can. Pause Lucas and go to adjust mode. Adjust the position. Reset the pressure pad. Hold it there while you press pause to set that position. Push the active button to resume compressions. Finally, we'll attach the stabilization strap. This helps keep Lucas in the correct position on the patient's chest. Put the cushion under the neck, up against the shoulders. Connect these buckles here and tighten up the straps a little bit. Make sure the straps aren't twisted and don't tighten too much. You just want to stabilize it in position. Don't over tighten and pull it out of position. If you're in a situation where attaching the stabilization strap might delay or impair treatment, then don't put it on or put it on later. And as a more general warning, if there is a malfunction or the compressions aren't sufficient or something unusual occurs during operation, you should stop Lucas, remove it, and do manual compressions. Okay, defibrillation. You can defibrillate a patient without removing Lucas. Make sure defibrillation pads are adequately adhered to the patient's skin. Make sure no pads or wires are under the suction cup. If you arrive and the patient already has pads on, you might need to replace them or reorient them. During a rhythm check or AED analysis, you'll need to stop compressions. Push the pause button. Analyzing now. Stand clear. Make the interruption as short as possible so you can continue Shock CPR. Advised. Use your defibrillator according to its manufacturer's instructions and your protocols. After the shock is delivered, verify the suction cup hasn't moved out of place. Readjust it if you have to. Push the active button to resume compressions. If you are ventilating with a bag mask, use the active 30 to 2 button. After 30 compressions, Lucas pauses for 3 seconds to let you deliver 2 breaths. Then it resumes compressions for 30 more. Once you have an advanced airway, like an endotracheal tube in place, you can switch to active continuous mode and deliver ventilations without pausing the compressions. When you transport the patient, you can secure their arms with these straps. This gets their arms out of the way while you work. Push pause to pause compressions while you're lifting the patient. At least three people should lift the patient and Lucas. Remember to support the patient's head even with the stabilization strap in place. Do not use the arm straps to lift the patient or the device. During compressions, make sure Lucas stays in the correct position and angle on the patient's chest. If this is not possible, push pause to pause compressions. As soon as the patient is horizontal again, Check the position of the suction cup, adjust it if you need to, and push active. During ambulance transport, the patient and rescuer should be secured. Just like with manual CPR, it's common for the patient to have bruising and soreness of the chest with the use of Lucas. Here are two other important procedures you need to know. If you need to change batteries while you're using Lucas, push pause. Swap in a charged battery, like this, and push active once you see the green LED here. Lucas can remember its settings for up to 60 seconds during a battery change, but if it takes longer than that, you'll have to readjust the suction cup on the patient's chest before you resume compressions. The same thing is true if you switch over to external power. And remember, you always have to have a battery in Lucas, even if it is plugged in. It won't run without a battery in it. Here's how you remove Lucas. 
Detach the stabilization strap. Push the on-off button for a full second to turn it off. Disconnect the upper part from the back plate with the release rings. Remove the back plate if the patient's condition allows. Clean Lucas is necessary before putting it back in the bag. Do not immerse Lucas in liquid because it can be damaged if liquid enters the hood. To change the suction cup, peel it off like this and throw it away as contaminated medical waste. Put the new one on like this. Make sure it's fully seated. Replace the battery with a fully charged one. Put Lucas in the bag like this, along with the stabilization strap. And that's basically it. Here's a quick summary. Arrive, confirm cardiac arrest, and start manual CPR. Unpack Lucas and power it on. Assemble Lucas on the patient. Adjust and operate Lucas. Defibrillate and ventilate. Transport the patient. Remember to read the instructions for use for information on cleaning, routine maintenance, and other important details such as general warnings. Thank you.